Hello and welcome to my channel where we discuss the Power Platform. I was about to say welcome to my exam then <laughs> because I'm all examed out. So today's episode is going to be looking at the PL900 which is the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals. Um, rather confusingly, well I find it confusing anyway, the 900s are actually more the fundamental exams and then you have the PL100, 200, 400 and 600 so that's just how um, power um, platform exams are kind of coded. So this is a fundamental exam. So this video is going to kind of just talk about how I prepared for the exam because I had a couple of questions after I passed, like what did you do? So I thought I'd uh, create a video. I also have put together a bunch of like um, material and a couple of things which I specifically revised for the exam. There's a lot more, of course, um, so I'm only giving you kind of pointers to start this revision. This isn't a complete set of what you can do to pass. But, you know, when you're revising, what I found anyway, is that I quite like just going and looking at videos and things just to like get my head in the game. Um, so, yeah, I think this will help, um, especially if you've got so now 10 minutes while you're having your coffee in between kind of doing really intense revision and you're just like, oh, what should I really think about and learn? So the, the first link on here is the, uh, the Microsoft Learn, uh, which is amazing. So I went to that a lot. Um, so that the link is there. You also book your exam through there. I urge you to go through and actually do some of the modules in there. It's not all just written based. There's hands-on learning, which is really, really helpful and great. And Measure Up, um, not being paid to put this up here, but of all the resources I found, I found Measure Up to be very good. Um, luckily, I was in a position where the company I worked for, or work for even, not worked for, uh, work for, were able to fund um, those exam vouchers. Um, and they're really good. There's a lot of other resources out there, a lot of exam dumps and all of these things, but, you know, they're not always very accurate. Um, and they're just extortionate, like, in terms of pricing and stuff. So I, I think this is pretty good um, and can be very useful. At the bottom there, I have um, included a flashcard set I found on Quizlet. Now, I just looked at the kind of preview. I think you have to like pay for it maybe to have a look at it. But of what I saw, um, it was a very good set. So I've also got that link in there. And I put all these uh, links in the description box below as well. I just include them on the screen in case um, you do want to just type them. So on to our first slide of different learning things that I picked up. So do learn about the Power Platform Admin Center and what it does. Now, the Dynamics 365 Admin Center and the Power Apps Portal Admin Center are different. So worth knowing that. Also, Power Apps Admin Center and Power Automate Admin Center no longer um, exist in that sense. They are actually just called the Power Platform Admin Center. So yeah, it can get a bit confusing when you're first kind of revising and looking through the different admin centers as to which one you should use. So in general, the Power Platform Admin Center can view and create and manage environments. You can view analytics, so for example, Power Automate usage or Power Apps usage. You can look at the different resources within Power Platform Admin Center. You can get help and su support, so create support tickets for technical support. You can look at data integration, so look at Dataverse elements. Set up data transfer between on-premise data and cloud services, so set up your data gateways, and also look at data loss prevention policies. So if you get questions around these areas, then this is what the Power Platform Admin Center can do. Do learn about the type of entities in common data service or Dataverse, as we now call it. There's four different types. You've got the standard one, um, so you can't delete anything from here. So these are ones that are a base set of table that I just created. So you get stuff like accounts information or um, being able to track contacts, for example. I'm actually going to jump to the right here and then go back to the middle. So custom, this is when you prefer um, you're making it for a particular um, thing that you want to create. So a very bespoke solution. So yeah, that's custom. Restricted are, so I'm kind of jumping to the third one now, restricted are, they have to be tied to a Dynamics 365 application and you need the corresponding license if you want to update, create or delete any rows in those restricted tables. Complex, this is when we have complex server-side business logic and you do need a Dynamics 365 or a P2 license and care must be taken 
if you add the server side logic to ensure the users have the proper license to use the complex table. So ensure that that's being followed. Learn about the different types of Power Apps. This is uh, very important for the exam. So learn about Canvas Apps, what they do, Model Apps, what they do, and Portals Apps, what they do, and when you would use these different types of applications. So I've linked the Microsoft documentation there. Again, this is just a starter to start thinking about those different types of Power Apps that we can create. Triggers in Power Automate. This um, is something that could come up in the exam. So You've got two types of kind of triggers there, which is the polling trigger or the push trigger. A polling trigger is basically um, an event when you basically look for new data. So maybe once a week you look for new data. Push is something that happens when it is basically listening. So as soon as a, an event happens, then you can use this trigger in Power Automate. So learn about when you would use those two and identifying how to answer those types of questions. Types of Power App portals. This is something that will be on the exam, very likely to be on the exam. So learn about these different types and when you would use the different types. So the customer self-service portal is all about resources, cases, feedback. So I'm just using buzzwords here. This is only a starter. The partner profile is the partner portal is when you want to uh, allow your organization with resellers. So you want to liaise with resellers and suppliers, etc. And you might want to share some data. Community portal is all about um, your employees there. So that should be the employee community portal. Portal from blank. So you want it to be completely blank and you want to start from that. The starter portal. So this is the data verse starter portal. So the key thing here is you don't need a Dynamics license to do this. So you can just do this with the the normal licensing and the customer portal, which is in preview. And that's it. Good luck for the exam. Let me know how you go on. Thank you.